We are here tonight to celebrate, to say thank you, and to have some fun. And we have a meal plan. Let's all look over here at the wonderful goodies that have been provided for us. And in just a moment, after an opening prayer, where we ask God's blessing on the food in our fellowship, we will orderly get up and fix our meal. So I'm, I've got my eye on y'all, no pushing people down, right? Y'all, thank you for being here. Bryant, thank you. We are here tonight because we love you. And we're very grateful for you. And that's why we wanted to throw a party. Let's pray together. God, we are so very grateful for Bryant Moxley and for one another and for our church. So tonight, God, we ask your blessing that it is a festival of love and fellowship and of thanksgiving. So we ask a blessing on this food that we will eat. We're so very grateful for those who've helped make it possible we thank you also, God, for the break in the rain so that we could be here. And we pray traveling mercies for those who are also on their way. Tonight, God, however, we pray that you make this space rich in laughter and in love so that when we leave tonight, we do, united as a church, thankful for your many blessings. Let tonight begin, God. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And let's eat. A lot of you want to know where Becky is tonight, so I thought I wanted to get that cleared up. So <laughs> Becky took our daughter, whose birth, her birthday today, to a play, and I could not be here tonight. So unfortunately for you all, you're stuck with Randy. So I'm a member of many things here, including the choir, and I'm certainly a master of none. Some might say that I'm in the twilight of a mediocre singing career. <laughs> But thank goodness I'm in the middle of the bass section and can hide behind voices like Mitch and TJ and Daniel and John and certainly others that are here. So it's an honor to MC this roast, I, I'm sorry, I mean tribute of the um, 10th anniversary of our music minister, Bryant Moxley. So before the entertainment begins, we need to give some thank yous out. First, Janine Skinner, our great organist, for the fun and festive decorations. We were blessed that Janine held her music recitals in Fellowship Hall this afternoon and left her decorations up for Bryant's celebration. And I think we've all partaken with our lays and certainly the way we're dressed and having fun. You also find on your table some caricatures of Bryant and we hope you'll take time to color them in and then maybe write a message to Bryant because we're gonna give those to him after dinner whether he likes it or not. So um, there's also, in a photo table back to my left, to your right in the back, uh, is where you can take photos with a festive frame. So feel free to do that as well. We also would like to thank the two donors of tonight's dinner who contributed the funds for all the food and for the preparation. Heather Rochester, We certainly thank you for a delicious meal tonight. You are, you know, you are considered the uh, chef for Wake Forest Baptist Church, and we thank you for your time and putting that together, so thank you. But I know you had some help tonight, too, so if we have Gene and Kim Cross and Norman Turner who are standing out here, let's give them a round of applause for helping Heather. <laughs> now we need to give a big, huge thank you to Liz Sniffen our plotter and planner of this evening's festivities. You know, Liz coordinated this event while rehabbing her second total knee replacement surgery. But you know, if you think about it, she had a lot of time to do that. <laughs> so she is our professional soprano, is a multi-talented lady, and we are blessed to have her on our team, in our choir, and as a member of our church. Thanks, Liz. The AV team is always important to us for all the things we do, and we thank you guys for being here tonight. And finally, to all those who came in early to help set up for tonight, and we do expect you to stay to knock everything down tonight, so thank you for being here. So, Bryant, you are truly a Renaissance man. 
you are the hardest working minister I have ever known in, in my life. I would also state you're a maestro, which was evidenced at Carnegie Hall in late May, and what a magnificent concert that was, and certainly to be a part of it. So let's review what Bryant, the little things, little bit of stuff he does around here. He heads up the children's choir, the youth choir, the chancel choir, the men's chorus, the joy singers, handbells, adult ensemble, inst instrumental ensemble, and the music garden for babies and preschoolers. I think that's a lot. What do you think? <laughs> but enough of the niceties. Anyway, he is um, Mr. Kentucky when it comes to wildcat basketball and in college basketball in general. If you ever have a chance to talk to him about it, he knows the history of Kentucky basketball. And I've had some great conversations with him, and he, and he certainly loves watching college basketball. So a great topic if you ever, ever need one, although he has plenty, obviously. And the, my favorite part is if you want to take your kids or grandkids to a local car museum, just ask Brian if you can uh, take him inside his Blue Angel car to see what a hand-cranked window looks like. <laughs> And, and how to operate it. So, you know, it's very useful in other ways as well. Now, I'm just learning to read music, and the most fascinating thing I've learned while being a member of the choir is how many music notations and symbols mean, look at me. I mean, mezzo forte, freely, mezzo piano, forte, crescendo, unison, it goes on and on, and it's always, Watch Moxley. <laughs> so, you know, let's get, to, let's get to why we're here tonight. So now, let me invite you, a term you may have heard once or twice from our music minister, to sit back and enjoy tonight's entertainment. First up is the men's choir singing The Maestro Man, especially written for Brian. We'll be singing this rendition twice and, we, and I invite you all, on, when we do it the second time, to sing the chorus line. You, you'll know this tune, and I know you'll know the chorus line. So um, give me one second to get in my position, and we will start the show.
Now, Brian, we do want to make sure you enjoyed us doing the slide for you, because we know how much you like us sliding when we sing the hymns and songs with you. So we call that for you the electric slide tonight. So now, let me ask, or invite, I'm sorry, let me invite. I'm, I'm trying to get the words right. I've only heard them a thousand times, but I'm trying to get them right. Let me invite Jeff Mathis, our senior pastor, to say a few words. I'm genuinely struck by the fact that you've asked me to follow that. <laughs> and the only thing I can think of is that somehow, some way, I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. <laughs> yes. <Exactly. laughs> I Actually, I don't think I've ever heard the mint sound so good, Brian. I don't know what that means. <laughs> They were nothing short of outstanding. All right, so here's the deal. I need us to go back in time. Let's all get in a, um, a time machine for just a moment and go back 10 years, right? 10 years ago, think about what your life was like, right? Think about what your family's life was like. Think about what life was like 10 years ago. For Wake Forest Baptist Church, 10 years ago, the church was choosing to call Bryant Moxley. At a time and a moment that is certainly not today. Now, I want you to think, as you step back out of the, your time machine, how much has changed in 10 years. It's breathtaking what we've experienced in a decade. We are different. Our families are different. Our rhythms are different. Our expectations are different. Our community is different. If I hear one more time about how the bypass around Wake Forest is no longer really a bypass, <laughs> our nation is different. Church is different. And what's remarkable about this is that, number one, that any of us have survived. And at some level, we should probably take stock of God's presence with us through a tumultuous and unrivaled 10 years, particularly in our context. Oh, did I mention that we had a hiatus because of a global pandemic? Bryant has not just survived these last 10 years. Bryant has thrived in a setting that, frankly, is nothing short of impossible. And we know that firsthand. <laughs> Full disclosure, and I think we know this, of everyone in this room, I know Bryant the least. But I know church, and I know our vocation. There is a reason why we've gathered here tonight to celebrate Bryant's achievements. But I want to draw our attention for just a moment to his commitment to a call to ministry at a time with so many challenges. So I know church, and I know that this is not normal. And I know it's not normal to have a pastor like yourself. And a pastor is not a word I throw around a lot. But Brian is a skilled and gifted musician par excellence, one that I've never had the pleasure or honor to know or to serve alongside. But Brian's presence, engagement, and commitment to the people of this church this last 10 years is echoed in your presence here tonight. This is not an accident. 
People didn't have to have their arms twisted to do this. People didn't need to be reminded of this moment. This is a natural outpouring. And brothers and sisters, this doesn't happen everywhere. And to do and to lead and to serve the way in which you have these last 10 years with so many challenges demanding that you adapt and merge and consider and rethink and reimagine and to do what you have done and to lead us the way you have is absolutely worthy of our thanksgiving and praise. I do know one other thing, and I do know the vocation of ministry, and I do know something about music ministry. And frequently you, you, well, you find all different sorts and kinds, and we know this. We've served with all kinds of different staff members. But Bryant is unique because not only is he an exceptional musician, he has the care and the concern of people forefront in his mind. And that is a call. Thank you. So yes, I've, look at my watch, I've been here all of about seven months and change. And I'm still very much getting to know a community that we're falling in love with, a people that are as lovely a people as I've ever met. And if the people that you have been leading and shepherding is any indication of the kind of person, pastor, and minister that you are, well, we're all in good shape, and I'm honored to be here. Bryant Moxley, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Jeff. Now, let me invite Jerry Parker, chair of the Music Ministry Council, to speak of Bryant's accomplishments over the last 10 years. Bryant, as Randy said, I was asked to speak about accomplishments over the last 10 years here at Wake Forest Baptist Church. And while I gladly do so on behalf of the Music uh, Ministry Council, actually I can imagine that there isn't a person here tonight who hasn't been touched by some aspect of your tremendous multi faceted contributions. So hear these few words that I trust reflect from and resonate with all of us from our hearts. It would be incomplete if I listed your accomplishments, and there are so many, without acknowledging what we know about you that allows you all these accomplishments. So allow me to link those things. Let me first address you as our loving leader You stand before so many groups, and I try not to be too repetitive from what Randy said earlier. So many groups here, and you direct our expressions of praise and invitation through musical arts and spoken word. And that is a really big job. The list, chancel choir, men's choir, youth choir, instrumental ensemble, advanced. I'm tired just reading the list, and you're the one who has to do this loving labor of leading all of this stuff. And how do you do it? Through your thoughtful reminders and rehearsals of how text and sound will multiply impact if we pay attention and stretch to do something harder and at a higher level because God and those hearing the music deserve that measure of extra effort from us. We get it through your thoughtful, focusing prayers and your transparent sharing of prayer needs with 
heartfelt emotion and clarity. Next, let me address you as our responsible steward. You see things here at our church home as the treasures and resources that they are, and you treat them accordingly. This point starts with material and financial things, but covers very much more. You don't waste your money or time or talent, and you routinely encourage us likewise. While you are not miserly, and I've been involved with you enough as budget and spending formulations and decisions have occurred, you're not miserly, but I do know that you are respectful of all the things entrusted to you, and you act with them wisely. Much of what you've accomplished with us was achieved because of successive successes with a lot of hard work and little waste. And this penchant for thoughtful stewardship reaches into areas like scholarship programs and decisions and to the return of investing in the future of our church and our precious children. Our children and youth program's notable success is due in large measure to your recognition of these young, vital members of our church family as deserving of our energy now with a long view for God's return on that investment as they grow. Your thoughtful shepherding and insights into critical matters like learning opportunities for all ages, missions, and exchange work, exchange work segue, youth festival, com composer weekends, D now, the list is just too long to cover here. But we feel your responsible guiding hand, and we're grateful for it. Next, let me address you as our sacrificing humble servant. Once when someone asked me to help them understand Bryant's success, I gave an exaggerated but clear example. I said to them, well, we would put our heads down and try to break down a brick wall if Bryant asked us to. <laughs> I added this type of loyalty and response to his leading wasn't really that complicated. You see, we could be assured that either he would be the first in line to take on that wall to show us how it could be done, or he'd show us the bruises from how he had already done this before. He doesn't give orders. He invites, a pivotal term, <laughs> he doesn't give orders. He invites you to join in on the adventure and he gives confidence to all about the ensuing success. Difficult to imagine how many children, volunteers, staff members, all groups he touches have been confident because of something he said, some example he set, some clarity he has brought, some help he has provided. And just at the time and place that was needed from someone willing to sacrifice their time and wisdom for selfless return. Many of us have had the opportunity to sing at Lincoln Center, Carnegie Hall, most recent of which under your direction. Even with this distinct honor, you humbly deflect praise to other participants and hold fast to the motto, Soli Deo Gloria, and it's not about you. And what an example. Finally, I'd like to address you as our comic in chief. <laughs> Bryant, we love showing up. It is not dreaded obligation, but instead family fun time when we get together to rehearse or to present. And sometimes, and I chose this word carefully, sometimes it is riotous fun amidst all the hard work. Some of the hardest belly laughs I've had in years came in choir rehearsal. <laughs> How do you get enthusiastic participation from all involved? Well, Bryant, you have that touch you know how to lead through serious, hilarious, and everything in between. And it's not just the adults. As I've said before, the children, oh my goodness, the children are blessed by you greatly. All groups who do, you deal with, from babies to youth choir, really respond to you because they see in you that which they know intrinsically they need and that to which they are so irresistibly drawn. Such laughter and joyful noise from younger folks in our fellowship build us all up and encourage us about the future. And we thank you for that. 
We laugh and we love and all the opportunities we have with you as our leader. Now, I know I have left out events, groups, dear memories that others have hold close about you. And truly, I could go on and talk all much longer. But I will stop here saying thank you so much for all you have been here at Wake Forest Baptist Church over this past decade. Wishing you even greater things over the next decade and inviting you to now hear those other things I can't get to here from all these gathered around you in loving recognition of you on this your special day. Thank you, Brian. Thanks, Jerry. I'm certainly looking forward to this part. So the Celebration Choir will now premiere a piece written especially for Bryant entitled, But Why Did It Take 10 Years? The lyrics and music were composed by our own Ron Bowman. Ron has incorporated many of the phrases and terms Bryant uses during choir rehearsals into this special piece. We encourage everyone to listen closely for these very distinctive, one person put it, Bryant phrases, I call them Bryanisms. And I know all the choir members will be very familiar with this. So let me invite the celebration choir forward. The Sopranos, the altos, the basses and the tenors, we sing for the saints and we sing for the sinners. We practice and we practice until bright likes what we He shakes his head and then he says and then he says but why did it take ten years when the men's notes start to roam Brian calls them barely tones he says don't let sopranos lead you astray don't make a career out of singing that phrase. And when we miss the highs and lows, Brian says we're starting to decompose. He says those strange noises, I suppose, must be wrong. He shakes his head and then he says and then he says but why did it take ten years top so your heads is all i see face your ears and look at me this one is a really fast song you can Breathe when you get home. You must not know if you're women or men based on the way you try to come in. Hearing this is plain to see. You needn't go home. and the tenors, 
Great job in writing it, and our celebration choir, great job in singing it. Well, we've had the honor of honoring him, we've had the fun of honoring him, but now let me invite Brian up to say whatever he would like to say about his 10th anniversary. I was just told to be here at 5.30. <laughs> I am grateful for one thing, and there's one person in this room who can understand this. That I had a 10-year anniversary at Marion Baptist Church, and in Southwest Virginia, they were pranksters, and what they loved to do was anytime anyone remodeled their house, if they remodeled their bathroom, the toilet would end up in the front yard of other people around town or sometimes on top of the roof with the Santa Claus on it or other things. So my 10th anniversary there, um, they put a crown on my head and a plunger in my hand and sat me on the toilet for the whole program. <laughs> True story, you, you can't make that up. So I'm just really grateful that I'm only wearing a lay and that I'm not sitting on a toilet tonight. <laughs> um, I'm really over, overwhelmed at, uh, at all the things that you have said. I'm overwhelmed by your presence here. Um, the gift is what I've received. I've, that's the gift far outweighs uh, what I've received is so much more than anything that I've ever given. Um, there are some people here in this room that are here to blame, that, I, that you can blame for this. I want to thank, we have some search committee members sitting right over here. Dave Leonard, Steve Debevic, um, Esther couldn't be here. She sent me a text. Gene Cross is over there cleaning up. Uh, he was chair of the search committee and Kathy Wallace. Um, I want to thank them for giving me the opportunity to be here. Um, some of you might know that I was at a really s small college. I had a part-time church that uh, far, far less people in, that's in this room had been there for nine years, and a church like Wake Forest could have had anybody in the world to be the music minister, and, uh, and you gave me this opportunity, so thanks to the search committee. Um, I want to say thank you to the, all the staff people that I've worked with through the years, but especially that first staff, uh, Joanne and Sarah and, and Rob, uh, and Bill's here tonight somewhere. I lost track of where he is. Um, they gave me the opportunity to come in and just to be myself and they helped me learn this congregation and helped me find my place it helped me feel at home um, on a lot of days when I couldn't even remember the office volunteer who was there at lunch or at, in, the, in the morning uh, because it's such a larger context than I had been in before and uh, so uh, Jonna and Denise and, and and Linda and then all through through the years of different staff people Nothing that has happened here that we experience together is, is because of me. It's because of what we've all done together. I think about the Kairos leaders. I made a post-it note and I can't read it without my glasses, so I like the fact that the picture, I have my glasses on it there. <laughs> um, I love those little caricatures. Those are, those are great. Our Kairos leaders, the AV team, um, 
the youth choir mentors, everybody talks about our youth choir and they are phenomenal, but our youth choir mentors that are there every single week, um, I think about how special Sheila made me feel when I first came and how she gave me confidence in walking into a brand new youth choir and she helped me feel at home. Music Ministry Council. And then I think about all the, com the different committees. Oh my goodness, how many committee meetings can there be in 10 years? Um, uh, one in heart, or somebody who was on that committee that's here with me, his vision, our mission, stewardship, um, leadership council. I mean, that's a lot of Tuesday nights. It's a lot of Tuesday nights, but, but gosh, the opportunity to be church together and to, to have that privilege of what it is to see what God's doing in, this, in our community and through our church. And there are just so many ways that you've taught me what it means to be a church, to care about your, about your neighbors, to show up and to begin a, a, a community garden ministry the, on Saturdays, the, the good... Um, many of you in this room know the ways that you've walked me through some really difficult journeys. Others didn't really know what the journey was and you still gave me stuff for my new house and, you, and you've loved me on Sunday mornings and you smiled at me when you didn't have the slightest idea what was really going on but you knew I needed your smile. And you've loved me through and now in this journey of caring for my parents, you're loving me through that in ways that I certainly don't deserve but I really appreciate. So I love you all. And um, I've managed to not cry too much tonight and there's probably something else ridiculous to make fun of me coming, I hope, uh, or maybe not, but uh, at least there's not a toilet to sit on. <laughs> Bryant, you're the best. I'd like to thank everybody for being here tonight to help celebrate Bryant's 10th anniversary. It's been a lot of fun, and we certainly are so blessed and thankful to have him. As Jeff opened up with, I just, Bryant, we all love you. You got you to hang around. I don't know what's, you know, if you're thinking of anything, if you are, we're going to have to have a talk about it. But um, we really appreciate everything you do here. So thanks. Good night, and I do expect all of you to be in church tomorrow. See you.